Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are visiting the Polish Central Bank and the Center of Money, where they provide education on the history of various world currencies and the Polish Zloty. Join us as we learn about the 1,000 years of history of the Polish currency. During our visits to the NBP Money Center, we will speak with Adam Skrauta from the Education and Publishing Department of Narodowe Bank Polski. The Polish Central Bank functions under its current name since 1945, but is a continuation of two earlier banks, operating in the 19th and early 20th century, serving a similar function. So now we are discussing the history and the story behind the Polish currency, not otherwise known as the Polish Zloty. And I know that some of the famous Polish people are also involved, especially a very famous Polish astronomer that has his involvement in the Polish currency. And I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit about it. Um, yes, uh, Nicolaus Copernicus was, a, we can say that he was a genuine man of Renaissance mm -hmm. because he was interested in many fields of study. Sure. And one of them was economy mm -hmm. and the question of money. He was a strong advocate uh, of, uh, of using uh, money coins of high quality. High quality. Because uh, at, the time, at the time there was a problem of uh, money debasement. So some rulers decreased the quality of coin on purpose. So for example, uh, reducing uh, the content of precious metals, silver sure. and gold, and mm -hmm. pretending that the face value is still the same. Mm -hmm. But of course, society uh, sooner or later uh, would, fi uh, would find out about it. Sure. And uh, Nicolaus Copernicus uh, said, no, we can't do it because people, uh, people won't trust uh, money that yeah, is yeah. issued by, by the king. Mm -hmm. And uh, he urged uh, Zygmunt the Elder to, to introduce uh, a new reform mm -hmm. and introduce uh, coins of really high quality with no cheating, to, <laughs> in a nutshell. And mm -hmm. uh, well, the king listened to him mm -hmm. and new, new, new issues were of much higher quality than, than previous ones. And, uh, this helped uh, Polish, uh, Polish economy to develop uh, really well mm -hmm. during the whole uh, 16th century. Mm -hmm. And ho also he, he made a lot of observations about how people use money. Mm -hmm. And there is a very famous uh, law, the uh, Copernicus Gresham law, uh, which says that uh, Bad money, money of low quality, sooner or, uh, sooner or later uh, will replace uh, good money mm -hmm. because people, uh, people pre prefer to keep uh, coins of high quality for themselves uh -huh. and to put into circulation those of uh, lesser quality. Makes sense. And this is why uh, money market can be easily destabilized. Mm -hmm. The third and most famous treatise of Nicholas Copernicus on money was named On the Minting of Coin and presented for the first time in 1526. Next up, we will ask Mr. Skranta about the methods taken by Copernicus and the Polish King Sigismund the Old to reform the Polish coinage system. You were just telling me earlier that the Polish king made a reform of the Polish currency with the help of the astronomer. And I was wondering what are the more concrete actions that were taken and the reforms that were made that differentiated the old currency from the new? Uh, so Zygmunt the Elder was a very prudent ruler mm -hmm. with a long perspective in mind. Mm -hmm. And he, he knew that uh, uh, demand, uh, demand for uh, better money would be increasing over time. Of course. And he wanted to meet this demand. Mm -hmm. uh, so during his, uh, during his reform, he, he decided to introduce a lot of new kinds of coins because we were talking about Polish Zloty yeah. as a unit of account. Of course. But uh, at the same time, there were uh, a lot of tactile coins that he, that he introduced. Sure. 
So like uh, multiplication of gross, which mm -hmm. was very important because people wanted mm -hmm. bigger, um, bigger denominations in circulation. Mm -hmm. And also for, uh, I would say, the echelon of society, mm -hmm. he introduced uh, even, even higher denomination, uh, coins made of gold, mm -hmm. and also much bigger silver coins called uh, talar and uh, very popular at the time, gold ducatus. And uh, because of this, uh, researchers, researchers often say that uh, uh, in practice, in Poland there was so-called bimetallism. Bimetallism? So, yeah. two, uh, uh, so two kinds of, uh, two categories of mm -hmm. coins okay. existing in circulation right. at the same time. That's interesting. How do people keep track of the two different types of coins? Like, uh, there must be some really hard math involved in conversion. Okay. Yes, the, the converging the, and determining the real value of a coin was a big challenge at the time. Mm -hmm. So you had to, when you were a merchant, you mm -hmm. always had to keep some weight with you. Ah. And you had to weigh coins all the time. Right, right. Mm, not, to be, not to be cheated. Right. <laughs> and uh, actually, the idea was, uh, it sounds a little complicated, but the idea mm -hmm. was, Quite simple. If you were rich enough to afford, afford uh, the higher tier uh, coins, that's the one that you use. This is the one you are going to use. So right. there was no uh, formal oh, limitations. Okay. Uh, you can't use it because you are not uh, <laughs> you are not allowed mm -hmm. to. I you, see. If you if you can earn it, you can keep it. Right, right. But uh, for uh, for practical reasons, uh, mm -hmm. in everyday use, uh, especially by uh, uh, by craftsmen or mm -hmm. peasants, sure. uh, they preferred smaller denominations because they were they were useful for them in yeah, everyday yeah. life. And mm -hmm. when we uh, when we talk about merchants mm -hmm. uh, who who were setting out on a journey, mm -hmm. it was much more convenient for them to take fewer coins, mm -hmm. but of higher quality, Makes sense. higher value. Mm -hmm. So at the same era, we also know that Poland is a very rich country at the time, you know, really prosperous. And I could imagine a lot of trade was involved with foreign countries. I was wondering what kind of currency do the foreigners use to conduct trade with Poland? Do they adopt a for foreign currency or do they use what the Polish people use? Uh, so yes, the, ma the main place of operation was Gdańsk at mm -hmm. the time. It was. Uh, uh, the, uh, the biggest port uh, mm -hmm. in the area, and this is uh, where Poland uh, was uh, exporting grain, grain and also wood, mm -hmm. so mostly raw materials, but it was a very good business at the time. And uh, actually the Poles were uh, very keen on acquiring uh, foreign coins, mm -hmm. because usually, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, between merch uh, merchants, uh, when uh, conducting transactions with each other, they mm -hmm. were using coins of higher quality. Right, like higher quality. And everybody wanted to acquire such. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we exported goods abroad, mm -hmm. mm, we expected foreign coins in exchange. Right. So you would say the foreign coins at the time were of a higher value than the ones being circulated in Poland? I think or? we should mention that, uh, generally speaking, in Europe, mm -hmm. in Europe uh, the whole monetary system was relatively unified. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Grosz was not only present in Poland, mm -hmm. but also in Germany, right, France, right. Uh, England. Mm -hmm. The same is with Talar, Ducatus. Mm -hmm. uh, its real value uh, may ha uh, might have uh, varied, mm -hmm. but uh, generally speaking, uh, there was some unison between between European countries in terms of uh, types of coins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, you had to be careful. Yeah. You have to determine the real value of coin mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it was uh, it was relatively uh, you could uh, generally speaking you you knew what to expect from 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 the other party as we have seen today the history of the polish lotti is long but at times tumultuous with wars invasions and periodical financial crises however today the polish central bank has managed to keep the value of the polish lotti stable and secure
I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.